According to LifeWay Research, even though pastors are stressed by the overwhelming ministry demands and low salaries, only 1% abandon the pulpit each year. A change in their calling and church conflict are the two main reasons for their departure. What is it really like to pastor a church in today's world? For nearly 40 years, Robert J. Morgan has pastored the Donaldson Fellowship Church in Nashville, Tennessee. Along with teaching and serving his members, he is the best-selling and gold medallion winning author with more than 35 books in print and more than 4 million copies in circulation in multiple languages. He is married to Katrina, who is battling multiple sclerosis, the father of three beautiful daughters, and the grandfather of 14. This is his story of unshakable faith. This is today's life. There are a lot of challenges to pastor a church. Mm. Have you ever questioned God, or what are some of the greatest challenges that you face? Well, I think the biggest challenge for a lot of pastors today is discouragement. Discouragement is the occupational hazard in ministry. Uh, and there's a lot to be discouraged about. Uh, church attendance is struggling in the United it States. Is. We have a new generation that doesn't have the kind of loyalty. We have a society that has become more and more secular. And the secularization and the atheism of society is uh, trickling down into the church. Uh, and this secularism we're dealing with today is a militant, intolerant, fundamentalist sort of secularization uh, that really is adamantly opposed to Christianity. It tolerates everything except but, for biblical exactly. Christianity. And so there's a lot of reasons today for us to be discouraged. There are better reasons not to be discouraged. But discouragement is uh, pandemic among people in ministry right now uh, just because of all of these reasons. And, you know, I've battled discouragement off and on for years, and you have to fight your way out of it. I tell people all discouragement is from the devil, and all encouragement is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm discouraged, I have to go to the Scripture. And we're usually discouraged when we are pastors or we're in ministry because we wonder if what we're doing is doing any good, right. if we're having any effect on people, if we're really... Uh, turning the world upside down or changing the world the way that we envisioned when we went into this uh, profession. But you know, the Bible teaches that we cannot always see our results, but that God has promised that as we are faithful, the results will come and there is a ripple effect to what we do that will continue on to the end of time. I write about this in my book, Mastering Life Before It's Too Late. And so many times I go, to the Bible, and I remind myself of 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And some of these verses, there are a lot of verses like that, Isaiah 55, Galatians 6, I could go on and on. They just remind us and reassure us from God that our work is being used of him in ways that we can never imagine. Well, and you, so we go on by faith. You know, when I look back on my own life, some of the struggles that I went through and wondering what God was doing, and then years you know, go by and I look back and I think, wow, look what he's done. Are there any stories in your life that you can share about your unshakable faith when, when you know you're... you're you're in the midst of something and it's like, am I ever going to get out of this or is it ever going to change? And then maybe six months down the road, you look back and you think, wow, look what God has done in oh, my life. Oh, yeah, sure. It could be six years. Um, but, uh, you know, the Bible says, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Um, yes, Romans 8.28. I've promise. written a book about it. The I read promise. the book, too, and I, I gave that away to my friend, too. I, 
I've that given is, so many books. That is a, a promise. It's the sort of the epitome, the climax of Paul's theology of justification in the book of Romans. It is a capstone of biblical promises. And it has no expiration date, and you can't wear it out. And there have been a number of crises in my life. We all have crises. I hate them. I'm subject to panic attacks. I get uh, very upset, very anxious. Um, See, but, I would never know that, knowing oh, you. Oh, I, I you know, I, sometimes I battle anxiety disorders, but you have to keep going back to those promises. We had a crisis in our church about 10 years ago. Uh, I had two men who um, became uh, disgruntled uh, and really created an existential threat that uh, it was a very difficult year to go through that. Uh, but I was flying back from Asia to America, uh, having to deal with it, very cast down, wondering if I should even continue uh, with this line of work. Um, and on that flight, the Lord gave me 15 Bible verses about joy. And I'll never forget that. I was just having my devotions on the plane. And I came to Colossians chapter 1, and it talked about uh, praying uh, with joyful thanksgiving. And that word joy, it's like it sort of jumped out at me, and that made me think of another verse about joy. Uh, Psalm 1 says that we should serve the Lord with gladness and make a joyful noise before him. And then uh, Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I started writing these down. Jesus said, I've told you these things so you might have joy. And by the time I got off the plane, it landed in Nashville, I had 15 Bible verses about joy and cheer and gladness. And it's as though the Lord said, now if you go back to your church and you are all discouraged and upset and frustrated and angry and bitter, then you're going to lose this whole thing. But if you bound up on that stage and just by sheer faith you are joyful and you're confident in me and you're enthusiastic, then people will follow you anywhere. And, you know, by faith, I made a choice that I would just be joyful. And when we make those choices, our emotions have a way of catching up with our decisions sooner or later. And it made all the difference. And I'll look back on that now and I say that was a turning point for me. I'm glad I went through that crisis. I don't want to go through it again. But I learned the secret of serving the Lord with joy, even when things were falling apart, because it doesn't depend on our work for the Lord, but our walk with the Lord. That's the secret of our strength. Tell me one more thing. What's yeah. next for you? I have a book coming out. It's called The Strength You Need. It's coming out very shortly, and my wife, Katrina, has some segments in it. And it's based upon verses that we have claimed as our extra strength Bible verses. She's disabled. I'm a caregiver. We struggle through issues of disability together, but God has given us some wonderful Bible verses that keep us strong every day. And we want to share those with this book, The Strength You Need. Pastor Rob, thank you so much for being with us. And I look forward to reading your next books. Thank you very much, Terry. My joy. Do you feel that your life is out of control? Do you feel like you need to master it before it's too late? My friend, it's never too late with God. We serve a loving Father, a Father of unlimited chances. You know, He tells us in Isaiah 43, 18 to let go of the former things. Don't dwell on the past, for He is doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing in your life so that you'll be able to share your story of unshakable faith with others and give him the glory. This is Today's Life. I'll see you next week.